Hi, so let's get started. We're going to do Chapter 1, Section 3, Gravity and Motion. And once the most important thing to remind you is that to do your vocabulary words because it gives you a preview um, of all of the stuff that we're going to do in this section. So force, gravity, law of universal gravitation, mass, weight, inertia, Newton's first law of motion. All of these words here make sure that you have completed before you do this. Now if you haven't, make sure you stop, do those words, and then let's get started. Okay, if you're ready to go, the first term, force. Force is a push or pull exerted on an object. Okay, so here I have a little guy and he's pushing and it was supposed to be a swing. He's smiling in here or a pull and this little girl is pulling a large glass of water. Okay, and so she's exerting a force. Okay, now we're going to use that to help us with the other terms. Okay, so here we have gravity. Gravity um, is a force of attraction that all objects have towards each other. And in this case, this S is the sun, and here is the earth, and I put an E there. And the earth is attracted to the sun because this is a larger object. It has a very strong pull of attraction on the smaller object, the earth. Now the sun is also, they're both attracted to each other. All objects are attracted to each other. This force of attraction holds all objects in their orbit. Um, in this case, the Earth's attraction towards the Sun helps the Earth and all the other planets, in fact, so that it doesn't float away. So it stays right in that path. Um, but the part that's important is that it's attracted this way. It wants to slam into the Sun. There's a reason why it does not. Okay, and we'll get to that when we talk about inertia in one second. Okay, so the law of gravitation um, depends on two things. First of all, the law states that every object in the universe attracts um, to one another, and the two things it depends on is how massive the object is. So the sun is very massive and has so has a lot more uh, gravity, a force of attraction, and the Earth also has um, an attraction. But the, since the sun is um, larger object than the Earth, it'll have a stronger pull of attraction. Now, the Earth and Moon, and I'm just going to write the word Moon, it's going to come off the circle a little. These two, this is another two sets of objects here. The Earth is attracted to the Moon, the Moon's attracted to the Earth. The Moon, Earth, and Sun are all attracted to each other. And this is not drawn to scale, and the distance also is another thing that depends on the law of gravitation. So how close the object is, and these two have a closer distance, this will have a very strong pull. This also has a strong, the closer the object is to the um, larger object, the stronger it has a uh, force of attraction. Okay, mass versus weight. Now I have these squares right here and I'm going to fill them in with some circles because first of all, let's just go over that term. Mass is the amount of matter in an object, okay, and it's measured with a balance. All right, so mass, let's say that it has, and we're just going to draw these circles in here, and these are just different particles. And let's say this is a different one and has packed particles. Now particles meaning like atoms and all of the 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 more particles closer together the more mass of the object is. Okay? And I just randomly drew, I didn't actually come up with which one what object it is. It's just uh, filling it in and showing you the difference. So the more stuff there is in the object, the more particles there are, the more um, 
more there are is there the more massive it is. When there's not a lot of particles, the lower mass. And we measure this with a balance and the units we use in science class is done in grams. Now question for you, this one would be low mass, this is high mass, what would this one be? Just jot that down, what do you think? And then here's weight. Weight is different from mass. The only thing that they have um, is that weight is a force of gravity on an object and weight is actually, we can measure, we can calculate it, which is mass, how much mass you have, times how much gravity is pulling on that object. Let's pretend that this is a basket, one of those that you can go to the grocery store, measure your fruit, and here are some apples. Okay, and then this, in the grocery store, this spring would pull down. The more apples, which would just be the same as up here with the particles, the more you have, the more weight, but it's pulling down Another example of that would be the bathroom scale. Now mass with a balance, think about that with the triple beam balance, you have the two sides and then once you have, that's one kind of balance, or you have the triple beam balance where you have the one side and then you counterbalance it with those weights. That is how you figure out how many grams there are and that's different balancing how much mass versus the weight when you step on that spring, it press gravity presses down how much mass and how the how much how much gravity is pressing down. Mass is constant, weight is not. Let's say, for instance, um, you went to the moon. Okay, so here you are. You have your little helmet on. You're smiling. You're going to the moon. Okay, give you some arms. Okay, you'll still be you. You go to the moon. Off you go to the moon. You will weigh different because the moon has one sixth the amount of gravity than Earth. And so, because there's less gravity to pull down on the particles that make up you, it's going to be a different weight. Okay, inertia is the more mass you have, the greater inertia. It's harder to start and stop. Let's say here's this guy, this car ran out of gas, and he's trying to push the car. It's very hard to push this car. It's very massive, okay? Now, if you had a little tiny toy car, that's easier to push because it has less mass. The more mass, the greater inertia. The harder it is to start and stop that object. Newton's first law of motion states that an object will stay at rest or in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Okay, so I have a little piece of paper that kind of fills in the rest of that for us by an outside force and that completes our section on uh, section three and I hope that was helpful.